Nikaya. Chaksu unmilitam yena tas my shri guru vena maha. Nama om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale. Shri makti bhakti vedanta swami iti namine namaste. Saraswati deve gauravani pacharine. Nirvisheshar sunyavari pastyat yene sutarine. Mancha kalpa tu vishya. Pipa siddhu pe vacha putitanam pavane vyo vaishnavi vyo namaho namaha. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadakar, Srivasari Gaur, Vakdavindam, Jan Ulambita Bhuja, Okanakam, Madhato, Sankirta, Naipa, Pitaro, Kamalaya, Daksa, Vishwambaro, Dvijabaro, Yuga Dharma, Falo, Vande, Jagat, Priyakaro, Kuruna, Avataro, Vande, Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Nityananda, Sanodido, Guru, Daya, Pushpan, Manto, Chitta, Sando, Tamo, Nudo, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So those of you who have been with us the last few days, we have been narrating the Mahatvagash Leela of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we'll continue with that. Um, it's, uh, this is the third day. And just for a very quick recap, for those of you who haven't been here, Lord Chaitanya is taking the, assuming his mood as the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the house of uh, uh, Srivas Thakur, and uh, he's accepting worship, Boga, and various types of glorifications from many of the devotees. After this was a grand ceremony in honoring the Lord, he is, he's in the mood of the Supreme Lord. And uh, now he's so happy, he wants to reciprocate with the devotees in so many ways. So individually, he's calling on various associates and others and glorifying them and at the same time reminding them of certain things in their life that they had, that he was there, but they didn't recognize him. So that was done with Sri Advaita Charya, with Gangadas Pandit, and with uh, Sridhar. Kolobetsha Sridhar, the banana, banana salesman. So now it says here, we'll go. Guranga is an ocean of transcendental qualities. And Lord Nityananda, who is also his companion, is without beginning. He is also the Supreme Personality of beginning, but of Godhead, without beginning, without end. After bestowing his boons on Sridhar, the Lord gently swayed his attention and repeated the name Nada, Nada, Nada. He spoke to Advaita Acharya. Acharya, ask what you need. Advaita Acharya replied, my prayers have already been answered, my Lord. Lord Chaitanya appreciated this answer with a thunderous roar that drowned out all other sounds. While Lord Chaitanya was still manifesting his mood as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Gadadhar prepared Vedala not to be offered to the Lord, nor Nityananda, who was non different than Ashesha, held an umbrella over his head. As other great personalities, along with Advaita Acharya, stood before him. Now the Lord turned his attention to Morari, Morari Gupta. And the Lord said to Morari, look at me. And Morari looked and he saw Sri Ramachandra in person. That same Vishwambar was now sitting on a, on a kingly throne with bow, beautiful greenish complexion, like the tender shoots of grass. And on his left side was 
Sita Devi on his right, Lakshman, and all the brave monkey leaders were offering prayers. Now, perceiving his identity, Narari, perceiving his identity as Hanuman, seeing his beloved Lord Ramchandra fell down in an ecstatic swoon. So we know that Murari Gupta, who appeared in Lord Chaitanya pastimes as a, a physician, he was older than the Lord, um, now is being revealed that he is Hanuman himself and the Lord was showing him his form as Sri Ram. The Lord wants to have a little fun, so he says, hey monkey, you seem to forgot how the demon Ravana stole Sita and you burn, who stole Sita Deva, and he also burnt your face. In rage, you set ablaze his capital and destroyed the entire race. I am that same Lord who are now again in your presence. Harari, you are dear to me as my, in my, as my own life. I am that Lord Ramachandra. And you are Hanuman. Look, now here is Lakshman, your beloved life and soul. You saved his life by bringing that herb from the Gada, Gada Madana mountain. Offer obeisances to the lotus feet of Janaki, he said, whose distress moved you to profuse tears. Lord Chaitanya's words brought Murari back to consciousness and awaking he saw the whole thing and began to cry in love of God. Murari's ecstatic crying was so strong that it moved dry wood. What to speak of the assembly of Vaishnava. The Lord said to Murari, ask for a boon, anything. The Lord said, I do, Marari replied, I do not yearn for anything. Just grant me one wish. May I sing only your glories and be born in any situation, birth after birth, simply that I can remember you and serve you in your association of your devotees. So we see here how every time the Lord wants to offer something to the devotees, because the devotee, the Lord's presence is so attractive and so full of devotion, ecstatic devotion, not just devotion. The devotees don't ask for anything. They can't think of anything to ask for. And even if they do, they consider it to be useless. All they want is the association of devotees life after life and then the ability to serve. We see that um, Lord Chaitanya inspired that deep detachment from every, everyone that met him. All that they wanted was his association and his service. After glorifying the Lord, the Lord said, so be it. I will grant you this boon. Hearing that, everybody in the assembly of devotees were so happy that they roared in jubilation and it filled the entire atmosphere. All the devotees became naturally affected, affectionately disposed towards Marari. Marari was always known as a great lover of the Lord, but now it's even proved more by this wonderful exchange by the Lord. And then the Lord wanted to say something. He said, listen, all of you carefully. If anyone criticizes Marari, he cannot be saved, even if he takes a one million bass in the Ganga. In fact, the bass of the Ganga or even the chanting of Lord Hari's name will certainly destroy such a sinful wretch. Marari Gupta, the Lord says, Gupta means secretly situated in Marari's heart. So the Lord is secretly situated in the heart of Marari. 
chanting the names of the Lord, the devotees went into ecstasy and they showered their mercy upon Mareri. Anyone who hears these pastimes of the Lord's extraordinary manganinavati will receive Krishna Prema. So there's a follow stuti. Follow stuti means the benefit of hearing such pastimes of the Lord, but one receives a special form of mercy. In this case, the topmost mercy is available that someday one will achieve Krishna Prema. Then the Lord started to chew on the betel pond that was, that was uh, offered to him and it was making loud cracking sounds. Then the Lord chain, turned his benign, benign glance on Srila Haridas Thakur. He said, Haridas, your, your body and birth is superior to mine. Your class and caste is more elevated than mine. Although that sinful Muslim tormentor inflicted great pain upon you in my heart, I, in my heart, I hesitate to punish him for that would surely disturb you. Such is your compassion in nature. When the, when Haridas Dakor was threatened that either you give up the chanting of the holy names of the Lord, why you were born in that, Islamic Hindu uh, society, and now you are taking up the worship of the Hindus. So this leader, this uh, Muslim ruler said to Haridas, give it up and take up the religion of your birth. Otherwise you will be punished to death. Aridas was not the least disturbed by such threats. And he said, you may cut my body into a hundred pieces, but each of the pieces will be chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. <laughs> when they heard that, they decided he should be killed. So they tied him up <clears throat> and, and with ropes, and very two big strong tormentors who were like monsters took up whips and they were dragging Haridas through various marketplaces. The Lord said, when I saw what was happening to you, I decided to come and I descended from, the, descended from my place in Vaikuntha with my Sudarshan chakra and I was going to cut off their heads while your tormentors were beating to you to death, you were unconcerned about your own pains. You only had compassion for them. On account of your most merciful heart, I could not use force. My Sudarshan disc was rendered impotent. I was not able to strike them because your forgiveness for them was greater than my power to act, but seeing, seeing, seeing what was happening to you, I decided to protect you. So I put my back upon your back and I accepted those whiplashes on my back. And then the Lord did something which shocked everybody. He took off his cloth in front of everybody and he showed the whip marks that were on his back. And he said to her, and everybody fainted, included Haridas Dakur, when they saw that. The Lord accepted the beatings just to save his devotee. This is Lord Chaitanya. And there's that famous verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by Lord Vishnu himself during the pastime with Ambarish Maharaj and Durvasa Muni, when Durvasa Muni offended Ambarish Maharaj. And then Ambarish Maharaj prayed and Durvasa Muni wanted to kill him, but he wasn't able to and the Lord released his chakra at, at uh, 
Uh, I just said his name. <laughs> um, Durvasa Muni, he, he released his chakra and Durvasa Muni started to run from the chakra. He went to Lord Shiva's planet. He is an expansion of Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva says, I can't help you. It's Vishnu's chakra. He went to Lord Brahma. He got the same. He said, Lord Brahma told him, if you want to get relief from Vishnu's chakra, you're going to have to go to Vishnu himself. So he went to Vaikuntha. Somehow he stood at the outskirts of Vaikuntha planet and he prayed to Lord Vishnu to be pleased to relieve your chakra. The Lord said, I have no power to do that because the pure devotees are in my heart and I am in the heart of my pure devotees. My devotees know no one but me and I know no one but my devotees. The devotees of the Lord sit, are situated nicely within the heart of the Lord. And they become so dear to the Lord. <laughs> I just received a letter today from one of my disciples in America. Uh, and he, he was he was being driven to where he was going. He was sitting in the back seat of the car and he was being driven. And the car went out of control and started to skid. And they were heading into oncoming traffic with trucks coming. There was a lot of traffic. And there was a big dividing wall. And he just said, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And as soon as he did that, the car gained control. The trucks saw what was happening and avoided hitting him. And neither one, neither him nor the driver, was even the slightest bit hurt. <clears throat> this story I just received today, how the devotee is protected by the Lord when the devotee takes shelter of the Lord. This is a beautiful story. <clears throat> and he was so... Uh, he was so moved by the Lord's compassion that when he went home, he has his deities. He made a special offering to his deities just to show his gratitude to the Lord. Of course, the Lord likes to protect his devotees, provided you remember him. When you remember Krishna, Rake Krishna Moreke, More Krishna Rakeke. When you forget Krishna, you never know what will happen. <laughs> Don't ever forget Krishna. And then one is completely freed from all the dangers of this world. Completely. Well, that was a nice story. I'll post the letter on the conference so if devotees want to read it, they can. When Srila Haridas heard about what the Lord had done, he, he fell onto the ground unconscious in a devotional ecstasy. The Lord said, Haridas, wake up, wake up. See my opulent manifestation of your heart's content. content. And then the Lord showed a beautiful form and Haridas rolled over in the courtyard. He was in ecstasy, breathing heavily, ecstatic symptoms, or like a hurricane attacking the body of Srila Haridas. And then Haridas started offering beautiful prayers. Oh, my Lord, you are the protector of the universe. You deliver the most fallen, especially persons such as myself. How can I describe your glories? What qualities do I have? To glorify you. And then Hari Dastakur demeans himself in so many ways, which I don't really want to repeat because I don't feel happy say, saying it. <laughs> and then the Lord said, Anyone remembering your lotus feet? No, Hari Das said, Anyone who remembers your lotus feet. 
and be he insignificant and fallen as an insect is never forsaken by you. Even the mighty kings fall from grace if they disregard your lotus feet. So this is interesting because one who takes shelter of the Lord sincerely always finds satisfaction, peace, happiness, and freedom from all danger. And then he goes on to describe how the Lord protected Draupadi from being disrobed in the assembly of kings. And when Parvati was being chased by witches who wanted to devour her, you punished the witch witches and saved Parvati. And then, then Haridas says, please, there is no more magnanimous personality as you. Please give me the shelter of your lotus feet. Then Haridas goes on to glorify how the Lord protected Prahlad Maharaj from being poisoned, thrown into a, a boiling oil, being hurled down from mountains, so many tribulations. And each time the Lord was there to protect him. It's interesting because Srila Haridas Thakur has within him the uh, nature of Prahlad Maharaj. What nature is that? The compassionate nature towards all living entities. And then here, you save the Pandavas when, when uh, uh, Doryodhan sent you to make the Pandavas look bad and you came in the nick of time and saved them and Durvasa and his army could not do anything. That's a beautiful story. I'll tell that story. Doryodhan wanted to destroy the Pandavas even though the Pandavas were in exile they were living in the forest and Draupadi was there. Now, Draupadi had a particular, I think it was Draupadi or Kunti. Yeah, I think it was Draupadi. Yeah, it was Draupadi's magic part, pot that uh, she could cook unlimited amounts of food for anyone. She was given this benediction by, I think, I can't remember who gave her it. But as, and then she would, could cook all this food. And then after she ate, then uh, no more food could be produced. So Durvasa showed up with this army of disciples. He has like 60,000 disciples and they came and they wanted lunch. <laughs> So Draupadi looked in the pot and there was nothing left and she had already taken her meal. And she called out, Krishna, Krishna, what am I gonna do? And then Krishna said, let me see the pot. And on, on the side of a pot, there was a piece of vegetable still stuck to the pot. And Krishna took that vegetable and ate it. It's a small piece. And as soon as that happened, all the 60,000 disciples and the Rasa Muni felt completely satisfied just as they had eaten a big meal. Now they were thinking, oh, how can we go back there? We cannot eat anything. We are so full. So they, they fled away. In this way, the Lord saved the uh, Pandavas from the wrath of Durvasamuni. And then Haridas narrates the story of Ajamil, how the Yamadutta is coming to drag his soul away. <laughs> And then you, by just simply by chanting 
the holy name of Narayan, you stopped the Yamadudas and you gave him a chance to become a pure devotee. <clears throat> Haridas said, I am such a destitute that I do not possess the sweetness of your memory. And yet you have not forsaken me. Although I am unfit to see you, you are present before me in person. I am praying to you now for only one benediction. The Lord says, say all that you want to say. There is nothing that I do not want to give you. Haridas spoke to the Lord with folded hands. He said, my dear Lord, I have only known misfortune, yet you have given me hope. Just allow me to, to partake of the remnants of your food of your devotees who are surrendered to your lotus feet. Let that be my permanent and most prominent service, life after life. Please grant me this, this benediction. And then Haridas goes on to speak a little bit more about himself and how, how he feels himself such an offender. And when we hear these things from great souls, how they demean themselves, just like we have the song that Bhakti Vinod Thakur sings, Amada Jivan, Sare paperate, nahi opoyero lesa. Amada jivan, my life, sade, always, pape, sinful. That is, the, that is the case of my life. My life is just so full of sin. This is the pure devotee, Shila, uh, Shila Bhakti Vinota Kaur, sings this, this song, speaking about himself. How the great souls, and that's what really makes them great. They see themselves as being so low, so without any devotion, without any good qualities. And yet they're exhibiting the highest. And this is a quality or a characteristic of as the more one makes advancement, the more one starts to realize how far away I am from Krishna. Sometimes we see new devotees when they come to Krishna consciousness and they start becoming very enthusiastic and do everything nicely and work hard, chant their rounds and read the books and do everything. After about a year, a little more, they start to think, well, now I've become advanced devotee. Now maybe I'm even a, a pure devotee. <laughs> This was a common feature in our society in the early days when devotees didn't know much about the process and everyone was getting so much happiness from executing the process that the persons were thinking, I must have made it. <laughs> I feel so happy. I'm in so enthusiastic. There's nothing like this Krishna consciousness. I must be a pure devotee. But actually, when the more you make advancement in devotional service, the more you realize that you have so much to go. So when the great souls demean themselves, they are not just using some pretense or some false statements to attract them, others to this type of humility. No, they're actually feeling like that. They're feeling, I am so wrong. And then the Lord says, as my servitor, your position is unique. You have therefore imprisoned me within your heart eternally. Since you are crowned already with faultless character, I bless you that you will always continue to worship and serve me and my devotees without a single deviation or offense. A tumultuous sound of joy raised from the, the assembly of devotees. 
just hearing Lord Chaitanya's glorification of Srila Haridas. I birth, caste, food of activities or worth or wealthless com commodities to achieve Krishna Prema. The only intense way to achieve Krishna Brahma is that loving desire to take shelter in devotional service to the Lord's lotus feet. The Lord said, a Vaishnav may take birth in any family, but he is always the most exalted. <coughs> this is my verdict. Haridas Dakrar is the living proof because he was born in a Muslim family. Yet he saw and spiritually perceived as rare what he saw. Even the great eminent personalities like Lord Brahma, only the most wretched sinner will judge a Vaisnav by caste, by race, or by nationality. Or for doing so, he suffers the pangs of repeated birth in lower species. So this is a very important point here the Lord is making, that sometimes tendency is there to judge a person according to what type of body they have, what is their background, what is their social position. But these, all these things have nothing to do with devotional service. Therefore, we see even Gajendra, who was in the body of an elephant, became a pure devotee. Lord Chaitanya took two dogs on two different occasions and brought them back to the spiritual world. And so there's so many examples. Kubja, what was her position? She was a prostitute, but she was attracted to Krishna. And because of that, she attained the lotus feet of the Lord. So it's not by birth, the qualifications good learning or anything material that attracts the attention of the Lord only when one serves the Lord with devotion this causes the Lord to become purchased controlled by the love of his devotee the devotees now started to talk about Hari Das. They said, he, some, I think he's like Lord Brahma. Another one says, Prahlad has come again in Hari Das. Now others said, he, he must be an eternal associate of Lord Chaitanya. They were all thinking Lord Brahma in Shiva desires to associate with Hashila Hari Das Thakur. Even the demigods feel the same way. And Ganga Devi wishes to bathe Haridas in her waters. Such is Haridas's position. Just seeing him relieves one of the bondage of material existence. What to speak of associating with him? Uh, Prahlad was the son of a demon. Han Hanuman was a monkey. All considered glorious. Haridas was born in a non Hindu family, but still. Upon hearing all of this and the glorification of the devotees and the Lord, Haridas, along with Marari and Sridhar, began to weep joyful tears. The Lord smiled pleasantly, chewing on his betel nuts, which sitting upon the throne. His effulgence lighting up everything while Lord Nityananda stood by holding a very attractive umbrella over the head of Lord Chaitanya. So we'll stop there with the beautiful narration of Marari and Srila Haridas Thakur. And we'll see if there are devotees who would like to ask questions or offer some comment. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you so much. Um, very nicely um, you explained the pastimes of Murari Gupta and uh, Srila Haridas Thakur. Um, thank you so much Guru Maharaj. I request devotees if uh, they have any questions or comments or realizations they can share. 
Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, wow, <laughs> what a beautiful um, past time. I mean, um, I just didn't want to disband such an amazing past time, Guru Maharaj. Um, thank you so much um, for explaining us so nicely. And, uh, and Srila Haridas Thakur is. He is an ocean yeah. of glorious qualities. Mm -hmm. Lord Chaitanya called him the crest jewel upon the world. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, I just, I'm just reflecting while um, during the class actually that what should be to take away. There's so many points to take away. But I think the most important is that what should be the topmost quality of being a pure devotee. Um, taking an example of Muraridas Gupta, Haridas Thakur, and so many other, Prahlad Maharaj, so many other examples you've given, and how to surrender to the Lord um, by giving the pure devotion, humility, determination, and the selfless service um, um, without any expectation, but just only desire to serve the Lord just by surrendering in his lotus feet to achieve the Krishna Prema. I mean, this is such a beautiful uh, pastime. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. It's, that's the most satisfying. When a devotee just simply serves to please the Lord, it gives such satisfaction to the heart, gives peace to the mind, and it attracts the attention of the Lord. Yeah, that's bhakti. Bhakti is effulgent. It's superior to everything. Nothing can compare to, to bhakti. To achieve bhakti is not easy, but if one associates with and serves great souls, then bhakti, <clears throat> bhakti becomes easily available. This is the key. People want to know some key or some shortcut. The shortcut is to serve those devotees who have given their life to the Lord in devotion. Their mercy, their presence will awaken your bhakti immediately. <clears throat> and that is the verdict of all scriptures. Now, this is the Gupta, the hidden secret. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sastri Hoi, Lava Matta, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. <clears throat> one moment's association with a, a great soul can bring one to the stage of perfection. <clears throat> this is the glory of the great souls. Who are, only, who are always merciful to the fallen conditioned souls and they always want to somehow distribute Krishna's mercy. So if we can get that association, either through their vakya or through their vani, vani or vakya, either way, two ways to associate and then our life is now on the path of perfection. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Shamarani. Glory to you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Um, devotees have any questions or comments? Uh, Guru Maharaj, I want to ask you um, one question. Like, uh, as you said, the new um, when when the when people come to Krishna conscious, 
uh, in the new stage um, they they are very enthusiastic and after that they uh, they they feel that they are pure devotees after one year or so like that so um, but uh, i i see that a lot of uh, devotees uh, say like senior devotees um, say that the new people have a lot of enthusiasm and all that because they are new and they want to do everything like that but uh, after some time that enthusiasm i don't see that uh, very much um, in, in the most of the senior devotees or after initiation and all so um, i just want to ask you like uh, uh, how to maintain that enthusiasm and even i pray to krishna that always uh, please don't take away my enthusiasm um, because uh, i don't want to lose that because i see a lot of devotees uh, not doing any services um, just simply chanting their rounds and reading that's it and uh, i don't want to uh, be like that and i would i just want to um, i don't want to be uh, not losing my enthusiasm so i always pray to krishna and you Guru Maharaj, uh, please guide me, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, the association of, <clears throat> of great souls is the means for keeping it, not only keeping the enthusiasm, but increasing the enthusiasm. That is the foremost. The other ways is to be very uh, regular and very strict in your sadhana. Make sure you keep good sadhana and regularly read Srila Prabhupada's books. <clears throat> These two things together, chanting and reading, will help to maintain our enthusiasm. Hearing, hearing about Krishna will help to maintain our enthusiasm and increase it automatically. <clears throat> there are many ways but if we always keep the mindset that devotional service is a gift, it's causeless. There's nothing that we have done to gain the benefit of having the opportunity to serve. It's a gift that's coming from the Lord through his pure devotee. There's a whole discussion on this topic. If Bhakti is causeless, then how does it come? Why does it come to some and not to others? And bhakti is causeless, but what makes it available is the presence of the of the spiritual master, the presence of the of the pure devotees. These make a difference. So becoming grateful for whatever we have um, we have to be aware that as we make advancement we receive more and more mercy and that mercy comes in the form of intelligence it comes in the form of facilities for service. It comes in the form of realizations on the process of bhakti. But then we should be careful not to think, wow, now I'm making advancement. All these things are happening. We should always think that this is the mercy of the Lord coming in to us in different ways. And we're grateful for that because Krishna, when he sees you're sincere, he gives you more opportunities to serve. <laughs> and he may also, if he feels like it, he also will make arrangements for you to uh, uh, fulfill some of your desires, like the Lord knows what we want. Maybe something that is not directly devotional service, but because of the Lord is pleased, say you want a new house or something. And you're, you know, you're doing everything you can, but at the same time, it's not happening. And then you engage in devotional service and Krishna's please, and then he makes the arrangement and you get a nice house. You see, Krishna's like that. Or you might want 
today I'm hungry, what should I eat? I don't know. And then someone comes in the door and says, here, I brought to you something that I made, it's for you. And it happens to be your favorite food. This is Krishna. <laughs> Krishna is always trying to serve his devotees, and the devotees are always trying to serve Krishna. The devotees are not so eager to accept service from Krishna, but at the same time, Krishna makes it hard not to get away from him <laughs> when he wants to serve his devotees. So yeah, and so always be grateful for the opportunity of devotional service. You keep that mood there, even if things get rough or things don't go your way or whatever happens still it's devotional service means that you're you're preparing yourself to go back to the spiritual world and whether things are pleasant or unpleasant it has nothing really to do with your progress if you accept both in the same way as krishna's mercy for opportunities for advancement, whether pleasant or unpleasant, then you are free from all the, the confusion that, and dualities that come by way of devotional service. The process we're becoming purified. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for the um, nice lecture. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj, definitely. Thank you so much. Okay. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada and all glories to your holiness. I just want to thank you, Guru Maharaj, for this whole series that you've been talking about, all the stories. I think what's been happening, what happens to me when I hear these stories, it just strengthens and reinforces my faith. Because, uh, you know, for instance, um, well, of course, you were talking about all these different sacrifices and that, that the great saints have made. And uh, this is the first time I've heard of Gorari, uh, Murari Gupta, but I knew of Haridas Thakur. And when I first heard that story, I just wanted to cry. And uh, this also, uh, when you were talking about the early days with the devotees and how Krishna, um, we, have to, we have to believe that he's there for us. And you gave the, um, that example of the money uh, that appeared like in San Francisco in that it was like, I guess in the wind or the air or on the ground. Um, I think it was Malati you were talking about at that uh, in that story and how uh, that money just came and the, uh, the devotees could pay the rent, <clears throat> excuse me. And also in Philadelphia, when uh, this very well-dressed man came up and gave an envelope as a, as a donation, it just shows the different ways that the Lord comes to us. And when I hear those stories, that's what reinforces my faith. And when I hear of um, how they sacrifice their lives and yourself, Guru Maharaj, how you yourself have sacrificed your whole life for Krishna. It, uh, these are the things that I think about all the time. And, and, um, this makes and, and 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 Krishna how he reciprocates in the least in the moment when I'm not even expecting it. There it is. Um, he he comes through, uh, and and a lot of people I don't know if they see it or not in their lives, but he he's there and he he's always reciprocating. So I just I just want to thank you for these beautiful stories and um, to to uh, strengthen. My, res my faith to go on and uh, to hopefully someday be able to uh, say something uh, that's, that's in, that, that will hit somebody the right way, you know, uh, regarding Krishna. So um, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Can I tell you one more? <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs>
after I gave that class speaking about these two two pastimes where the, the money came through the air, I was talking to my god brother who's here. He's a sannyasi, Paladananda Maharaj. And uh, it was just the, the same day when I told the story. So I mentioned and I mentioned these stories. And he said, you know, many years ago when I was a devoted, many years back, I was uh, thinking, I need a new pair of shoes, but I don't really want to buy any. Then he was thinking, well, should I get shoes or should I not get shoes? And then, uh, then when he was walking, he, he saw some money flying in the air. It's the same thing. And it was money and he picked it up and he had enough money to buy some shoes. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a small thing, but it just shows how sometimes the, the Lord even takes time for these little things. It's up to him if he wants to do it or not, of course. <laughs> He shared that story with me. I thought that was kind of cute. <laughs> it wasn't even something that was so important, but the Lord wanted to reciprocate in some way. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's so sweet. Yeah. yeah the Krishna is there. We don't have to expect that, but we know him. we can expect three things from him. And this is the principle that Sheila Sanatana Goswami expl explains in what is called Saranagati. Saranagati means the principle of complete surrender. So that makes up six, uh, six principles all together into one. And three of them is Krishna is my only protector. Krishna is my only provider. Krishna is my only maintainer. And that's three of the principles of surrender. So the devotee has that mentality. They are they're surrendered. The other three are that one should accept everything favorable for devotional service. One should avoid everything unfavorable to, to, for devotional service. And the last one is dainya. Dainya means humility. So one who practices these six is, has come to the point of sar saranagrati or complete surrender to the Lord. Krishna is protecting me. He's maintaining me. He's providing everything I need. And if I did, he doesn't provide what I need. I didn't need it. <laughs> And that's a fact. <laughs> yes, I, I, I believe, I know that's to be true. I at least was brought up, it, it, it was in a different faith, but, but uh, f family members had that faith. And I just had an uncle pass away. Uh, he, had, he got the uh, virus. And anyway, he used to tell, say for years and years and years, I don't care if I die tomorrow. He said, the Lord can take me. I'm ready to go. And he wasn't such a, you know, I don't know. I know he had love in his heart for the Lord. This I know. And he, th this is how my, you know, grandparents, grandmothers, especially my uncles would talk to me uh, about the Lord. And so I, I guess I started to believe that early because they always believed it, even if they were to die, that they would be ready. It's amazing. They would say that to me. And he did pass away. And uh, I know, I, I believe that, that, that he went uh, to a, a better place. I, I don't know that he went to, you know, the spiritual world yet, but uh, maybe he went to the Lord uh, Christ planet. I believe that. Yeah. One who has attraction and devotion to the Lord is never lost at any time soul is eternal and death is just a phase that we go through but life is continuous so thank you very much for all, all these beautiful stories they're just so sweet thank you Hare Krishna. thank you Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna. Can you hear me? Magdi. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble love in Shaul Gurisht. Yes, Maharaj, my realization as well, what you've been saying is really right to be mostly in association of uh, devotees and then uh, the level of your surrendering to Krishna uh, does help you. And I've, I've been that the one you uh, gave the example of buying a house. Uh, yeah, we had been trying to move from South to here uh, like three, four years and every year we just, and in the end I said, look Prabhu, give up, let Krishna wants if he wants to go. And then he was suffering from coming to do his Ratyatra service because he had to drive, he couldn't drive that long and all that. And we just left it to Krishna and prayed what you want, I want. And then we were looking for the flats and decided to buy a flat, uh, apartment. So we were looking and every time I had a problem either with the kitchen or the living room, just those two things. That if I looked at the living room, I said, where can I have my altar first? And then if I looked in the kitchen, I said, well, I want a clean uh, gas and a clean uh, sink where I can do, do the service. So I'm just thinking about Krishna. And they said, why are you worried? We can change here or we can change whole kitchen. And all that. I said, no, I like to have a new property and all that. And I prayed to Krishna, just give me what you like, make your arrangements. And you won't believe it, just with Radha and Marcy, it was like, I had operation, I couldn't even go. And on Nityanand's appearance day, just before I said, look, I've given up, you find your place. If you want to move, we'll move there. And I want something that after, um, if I can't drive or that, I like to go by train service and all that. So I was just uh, praying to them. And suddenly on that day, we got a property. And then we said, okay, this month, and it was agreed just in one, two days, two weeks, we moved into this apartment we are living. So it was Radha Nandisho Marcy from there to come here and Jagannath Marcy for giving her, keeping our services to Jagannath. So, yeah, so yeah. several times I have, I've gone through that and then I, I'm realizing and that time I just see any, uh, uh, what's called, or obstructions or any other difficulties coming in our life, Krishna actually is giving us our some mercy and showing to other people how it goes. Even doing the altar in Radha London Shua, when we took over, we took over that, we'll do it. And came, the amount came up quite high and Ananta said, mom, what are we going to do? This much money is still there. And we, won't, we said we will, like heartedly I prayed that it should be done, the altar should be done in this time. And I said, just pray, pray to J Balram. That's my favorite, <laughs> Balram. Balram speaks to Jagannath and Krishna <laughs> that this sh should be done. And in two days time, uh, we had a phone call. And I was there, I said, the Ananta is there? I said, yeah, I said, okay. I said, oh, um, I heard that we uh, temple needs more money to finish up the altar. I said, okay, go ahead. I'll, I'll pay the whatever is pay, uh, to be paid, the rest, which you don't <laughs> mind. So, so it's like so, so many times. So yes, Marjo, whatever you say, we're going to repeat, but that's, yeah, we have to improve our, our surrender ship to Krishna and leave it to him do what we have to do, but don't wait for result or don't think of result, what is going to be good or bad, whatever is his mercy. Yeah, actually, and, and, actually Krishna is doing everything. We're just, just his instruments, that's all. And if you see this coronavirus thing, Marge, you've been giving us now nearly a year is going to go, giving us this association such a good association and all our brothers, everybody's meeting every day at the same time without missing. So we really, I'm um, really appreciate you Maharaj and I really oblige, I don't know how to repay for this and whatever you are doing for all of us. So, so much thank you Maharaj. We, 
hope it's more than what otherwise we had to wait that you'll be coming sometime in UK and we'll, be, we'll have your association or we'll have that. And that as well, sometimes we don't get it because we just come in in one or two days and uh, oh, don't have chance to see you, but we have chance to see you every day. So, and get your blessings and your, well, it's, it's given us so much, Marge, personally, I feel. So, okay, I won't take much time, give some other people the time, but Marge, thank you, Marge. That's all I can say. It's a very cheap word, thank you, but Marge. Thank you, Marge. I, I, I wouldn't have been able to go through this year, which I've gone through, but you always, every day, you're just pointing, giving us something that really pulls us towards Krishna and gives us hope and enthusiasm. Our level of enthusiasm stays in that level. When it tries to fall down, next day you'll bring it up by some saying something. Thank, Thank you. Arivo Madhavi, Sachinarayan, Ananta, and daughter. Hare <laughs> Krishna. I don't know what we would have done if you were not in our life. You were there every time I had. Even I don't have to tell you, but you were there always. You somehow I don't know. You always knew something was going bad in our life, and you you connect us straight away, thinking of Krishna and leaving it on. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna, thank you. Thank you so much, Madhvi Madhati. Um, you very nicely said. Thank you so much. Because of Guru Maharaj, uh, only we can, um, we, our enthusiasm and, uh, is, is being... You guys are going to glorify me. I have to leave. <laughs> no, Mark, we know we're glorifying because we are not... Um, uh, it is true that we should appreciate those who doesn't appreciate. It's not a cheap somebody thinks, oh, he's coming on there because Mars has got time. It's not Mars. You don't have time, but you you really sparing time for us. You know, we are really foolish, unintelligent <laughs> children. <laughs> <laughs> you have to really be pushed, you know, like parents is to push their children sometimes when they don't understand what the life is or what it is. So we are like that. We are just... <laughs> So we have our, our always learned that, and you've taught we should be student and uh, servant. Then our life is okay. We can then we can try and understand and follow you. So please keep that mercy on all of us, Paraj, forever. Madhvi, you are very dear to to Radha Londonishwar. <laughs> it's only because of your blessings, Maharaj. I, I can't do anything. And like you, uh, like you, great souls. Thank you much. Okay, so I guess we'll. Uh, Vivek has morning. raised his hand. Yes, good morning. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, if I'm not wrong, uh, Haridas Thakur uh, was Brahma in previous life. After Brahma Vimocha Leela, he, uh, he wanted to serve Lord in a very humble position. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like when I hear like these kind of story and pastimes, I should not say story, pastimes, um, it's like one side, it's very, very encouraging that Haridas Thakur was like serving Lord, full surrender uh, to Lordship in every odd situation. But other side, I feel like it's just kind of because they are, he's already empowered. He's like Brahma. So already empowered by Lord. And this is all like part of like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Leela. So how to really like, uh, sometimes like it's a material like mind. So how to like, is this all Leela? To prove our like to show ourselves that these are the lesson for us that we should have complete surrender and this is the like like the ideal situation for a devotee. These are examples for us to learn. We can't somehow jump up and try to imitate, but there is two principles: anusharan and anusharan. 
Anus Karan and Anus Sharan. Anus Karan means to imitate. Anus Sharan means to follow in the footsteps. That means you learn something from these great souls. In their service to the Lord, they teach us many things. So we can learn from that and we can imbibe some of those qualities or characteristics simply by serving these great personalities. But to expect us to come to the highest platform like they have all at once would be, would be foolish to think like that. So we, yeah, so we, that's why the process is to constantly hear. The more we hear, the more we understand, the more we understand, the more we can apply in our life. So we should not be overwhelmed by the greatness of these persons and think, well, because I'm not there and I can't be there, it's too far. No, These we just learn. But we can learn more and more. And as we learn, we can see how to, to use what we learn to improve our, our character, our qualities, and our actual service itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why it's so important to hear these pastimes regularly. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Aridas Thakur was Lord Brahma from the Leela of, uh, that was the Brahma Mohan Leela when Lord Brahma stole Krishna's calves and cowherd boys. And at the end, he offered beautiful prayers to the Lord. And then he prayed for a, a, a birth, not like Lord Brahma, with someone he could take part in the Lord's pastimes in a very insignificant way. So the Lord granted him that. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I think it's a good like lessons for us, like when Brahma, Lord Brahma can also think about uh, taking such position. This is teaching us such humility, like we are nothing actually, just insignificant. Yeah, but Lord, not to take anything away, but Lord Brahma came to that point after being embarrassed by Lord Krishna. Krishna just showed him that your mystic power is insignificant compared to mine. <laughs> it doesn't even exist. <laughs> Sometimes you, if you go outside, and you uh, and you want to hold a light up to the sun. So the sun is out, and you want to make it more brighter by putting out a light. Your light won't even be noticed when the sun is out. <laughs> so Brahma tried to compete with Krishna in mystic power, and Krishna just humbled him in such a way that he realized that you know, I'm nothing. <laughs> and that's Lord Brahma, whose intelligence is way beyond ours. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. And I also agree with Madhvi Mataji and others that I have learned a lot, like in last one year from you, Guru Maharaj, uh, kind oh, of wait, determination. Wait, 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 we had enough of that. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Next topic. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. I'm, of course, appreciating all the devotees who not only are, are coming every time, but are asking questions and taking part in an active way. That's important. Yeah, we're, we're at the one year mark. We started this program last March. Okay, thank you. So we'll, 
will uh, depart and will continue with uh, the Leela. And it gets, it continues for another, at least another day. Maybe, I don't know, maybe tomorrow is the, is the class with the devotees in uh, Harrisburg. Is that correct, Lavanya? No, Guru Maharaj. Tomorrow is our regular daily call. Um, it will be next week. Uh, Iskon Harrisburg will be next week. We did, we did ha Harrisburg last week? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes. Really? Okay, so then we'll continue, yes, with that well, tomorrow. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. All glories to the devotees. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.